Hey guys, it's Jim with Crawfordology. We've got a great show for you tonight. Hey, we're going to talk about remember remember Gretchen Whitmer over in Michigan and some of the crazy things going on there. You do, I know you do. We're going to remind you. Remember uh, the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. He's got some stuff to say about the Wuhan flu, and you know the strangest thing is happening in Virginia right now. We have a you know a very active activist overreaching. Uh, General Assembly and Governor right now, um, he's he's reached out doing some things to uh, a, a, you know through the executive order uh, regarding churches. You're going to want to hear about that, but after this. <laughs> Hey guys, in times like these, you need the best in firearms protection you can get. You know, our sponsor, ThreatWorks. And and these folks, you know, one of the things we haven't talked about is some of the cool things they do for the Hollywood industry, uh, movies. You can see some here, some that are in their credits. And if you just scroll up a little bit, there's, by the way, there's there's dozens, maybe hundreds more. Um but that's that's what some of the firearms or non-firing uh, replicas look like that that ThreatWorks provides, and they've provided these for all the big movies. They're all, they've been on the Batmobile, on the on the Green Hornet, on Optimus Prime, all sorts of things. Really r- and, and truly, hundreds of different movies. So, if you are a movie maker, if you need a special prop, go to the guys at ThreatWorks and and take a look. And by the way, if you're an individual with a firearms problem or with a firearms opportunity that you wanted some upgrades, you want to do some laser engraving, these guys have done some really cool work uh, for custom gifts for companies, uh, retirement gifts, some really neat things with their uh, laser engraving, their their hydro dipping, and their Cerakote. So just check them out. That's T-H-R-E-A-T-W-E-R-X, threatworks.com. And uh, you're going to be glad you did. So... uh, so let's see. This week in Virginia, we have a a really breaking story happening here Sunday night. Uh, Department of Justice. It, it, well, let's go back a little bit. You're going to remember that uh, not not too long ago, the president last week uh, went to uh, the Attorney General for Civil Rights, Eric Dryben, and the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan, Matthew Schneider. And he said, hey, I need you guys to look at any civil rights claims. We want to make sure that uh, the civil rights of folks aren't being violated because of COVID-19. That, that, you know, it's easy for a state to overreach. It's easy for a municipality to overreach and decide they have authorities that they just don't have. Um, <clears throat> so interestingly enough, on April 5th, uh, Easter weekend, we had uh, Lighthouse Fellowship Church of Chincoteague. So Chincoteague is one of the barrier islands. It's just south of Maryland uh, on Virginia's eastern shore. Uh, you might have heard of the pony runs that they, that they do out there uh, between Chincoteague and Assateague. Uh, anyway, the Lighthouse Fellowship Church, here, here's the thing you need to know. 225-seat sanctuary. They seated 16 people for this service, paying attention to all social distancing norms, they had some extreme extra, you know, hand washing, no contact, cleaning, so forth. And, you know, right after the service, the Chincoteague police decided that it was time to issue a criminal complaint against the pastor. And, uh, and they did that based on Governor Northam's order. Now, we've got some breaking news coming out of Department of Justice. And, and let's have a look here. So Department of Justice basically says... Hey, w- wait just a second. You can't do that unless you're going to hold that same standard for every single group in the state. So no one can meet if if the churches can't meet. If anyone can meet, you have to apply the same standard. So if you go down to the bottom of the article there or the bottom of the release, uh, you'll see in the statement of interest that uh, they explained, hey, uh, the government may take necessary and temporary measures to meet genuine emergencies, and that state and localities should be afforded substantial deference to to the response of emergency situations such as a current pandemic. But the statement explains there is no pandemic exception to the Constitution and its Bill of Rights. 
because the executive orders prohibit Lighthouse's 16-person socially distanced gathering in a 225-seat church, but allow similar secular conduct such as a gathering of 16 lawyers in a large law firm conference room. The governor's executive orders may constitute a violation of the church's constitutional rights and to the free exercise of religion. So, you know, these are things that the president said he was going to look into, and we're already seeing some effect. So I, I want to know what you think. It, you know, there, there are dozens of cases that you can find on social media right now, and, and we'll try over the coming weeks to pack some of these together but you're going to see that there are, are certain municipalities, certain states that that tend to be, in, in my opinion, now I, I could be off, but in what I've seen, it appears to be the Democrat-controlled states seem to be much harder on their constituents. And, and this is that mindset of we know best for you. It is the, it is the contrary to the, the, at least the old Republican platforms of smaller government you know, more emphasis on the individual taking action and control of themselves and less emphasis on the government coming in and doing the thinking for you. So we want to know what you think about that. Give us some comments. Type them below. Uh, you know, hit us up on, on not only here in Facebook, but in YouTube and Instagram and, and certainly uh, over on Twitter. Um, <clears throat> overreaching government is a terrible thing. We cannot allow this to stand, and we've got to stand together to stand against it. So, you know, speaking of overreaching government, we go to the governor of Michigan. You may remember, let's, let's go to that cut showing the protest from last week. Um, so, so you see some folks here protesting, uh, gathering together. Uh, this one in particular is really interesting to me because, let's go back one, one more. Yeah, right there. Hold it right there. So I want you to look, not a huge gathering. Uh, remember, they had filled up the inside. They wouldn't allow any more protesters inside. So, so I, I don't know what the total count was. But I want you to just notice the number of American flags, the number of people. It was a rainy day, apparently. Uh, folks with umbrellas, a few folks with banners. Now, let's, let's roll that on, on forward because what I want to get to was the response from the governor was so driven towards having and let's yeah let's go right here where she says hey the protesters displayed worst racism and awful parts of u.s history now scroll on down right here yeah that that image let's go to that image there too so the governor points out you know a a single i i, I have not seen these in other places so there is a single version of a Confederate flag. I can't tell which flag that is. It's certainly not the the uh, the main battle flag of the Confederacy, but uh, it has something else in the center. So I'm not sure what uh, what state that was or what group that was. Um, and then there's some freedom uh, flags. You know, this is just a quick note to some of the folks who are big Second Amendment and, and First Amendment. Of course, you have the right to express yourselves. This is one of those times when I have to ask myself, is it the best decision to make to express ourselves with things that we know are, are very volatile to at least a portion of, of the population? Because you can see the governor here is taking the opportunity to use this and say some of the outrageousness of what happened at our Capitol depicted some of the worst racism and awful parts of our history in this country, she said on CNN's State of the Union. So um, a small group of people, and, and if you can move that over just a little bit, I want the words right under that. Uh, the Democratic governor said the group of armed demonstrators, which she said included people wielding Confederate flags and nooses, in addition to other racist signs, we're not representative of who we are today. So, I, you know, I didn't see the nooses um, in this group. It, it used to be a common thing, by the way, that uh, the uh, the people of, of America and certainly the colonies would uh, <laughs> would use nooses not as, as uh, something in reality, but they would take nooses and then develop a straw man or a dummy uh, that represented a governor or, or, an or an unpopular political figure and they would burn these these figures. They would hang them from a tree and burn them. Um, 
I don't, I don't think that uh, you see that very often today. Uh, of course, anytime you have a big group like this, the group's coordinators aren't responsible for every single person or can't, can't control every single person. This is, this is a different mindset when you get to the liberal world because they believe we should be able to control every, every person at, uh, at an event like this. Um, and, and it's just clear to me that uh, she is grasping, she's looking for the worst representation of that group and trying to highlight that and, uh, and kind of skyline it so that it looks as if no one there had any legitimacy to their complaint or any legitimate rights uh, to be there and, and speak with her. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens from here on out with, uh, with Gretchen Whitmer. Um, is as she moves along and and we can see you know the covid nineteen piece that that she talks about that's actually a good uh, a, a good slide uh, you know all of this social distancing all this government shutdown these are numbers from two thousand and seventeen um, so these these came right from um, what's CDC. the cdc yeah so um you can you can see this these these numbers have had time to be corrected. Uh, these are the this is the final data if you notice in the PDF for the for the 2017 tables. So 600,000 approximately cancer deaths, uh, 650,000 from heart disease. Um, you know, as Simon points out, hey, we we uh, we didn't close down McDonald's for the heart disease. No offense to McDonald's. There's plenty of uh, fast foods and and uh, cringeworthy uh, food choices that. Uh, I've made over the years, and certainly uh, they do lead to some of these uh, some of these diseases. We know that. Um, the uh, the one I want to go to were I don't see the uh, the accidents. Um, yeah, okay, one hundred sixty nine thousand nine hundred thirty six accidents and unintentional unintentional. You know, who knows what things we would shut down. Um, but to date, what do we have on coronavirus? Uh, approximately 65,000. 65,000 approximately on coronavirus. Um, so, so if we're looking at numbers of around 65,000 total deceased, again, I hear the president say it. I understand it. Hey, one death is too many. But I want you to think, you know, how many people would have passed away this year of other causes, and how many folks are being uh, incentivized now to say it's it's COVID related, and and why would they be incentivized? Could it be, you know, some of the money coming from the federal government, some of the money coming from the state governments, will pay those those people a little bit more for COVID patients versus say a flu patient or a uh, you know a normal year fifty five thousand six hundred and seventy two deaths. And influenza and pneumonia. So, you know, are those numbers going to be very, very low this year? Because it just turns out they had COVID nineteen. Um, so I don't know the answers. I'm just, I'm just trying to express some, some doubt when I see these numbers come out, and and some bigger doubt. Are we moving in the right direction um, by continuing to hold these states hostage and and hold all of our people at home? Uh, what'll be the next thing that we worry about? You know, maybe maybe there's going to be another one. Uh, there's a uh, killer bee that uh, we see coming from China. It could be that killer bee now will have us stay uh, stay at home, right? Uh, this this uh, this hornet is is giant. Um, they say it can have a stinger that is nearly two inches long. Can penetrate beekeepers' clothing. Can uh, can kill a a hive of honeybees very quickly. So, by the way, I, I want to note right there: fifty people a year in Japan um, die from from you know the uh, the stings of uh, of this killer bee. So, you know, what else will there be that causes us to decide? You know, maybe maybe we're safer to stay at home. We just shouldn't go out. Uh, until we realize that there are things at home. You know, remember, uh, all through the 60s, asbestos in your home was perfectly acceptable. It wasn't until the 80s and 90s that we started to see some other issues uh, coming from the use of asbestos. So 
what else don't we know that's around us all the time? Are we going to live this life of fear and, and worry of, of all the things that could possibly kill us? You know, going back to that CDC chart, you remember, I mean, there, were, there was a pretty good list of things uh, just here from, from stroke to cardiovascular disease. Uh, there, are, there are many, many ways that uh, people uh, can expire or, or pass on. So we don't want to live our lives in a way that we're terrified to, to just go out and move. Now, Mike Pompeo today uh, actually has, has some fairly controversial comments about, uh, you know, where in the world did coronavirus come from? And uh, the Wuhan flu, as, uh, as President Trump frequently calls it, you know, we've, we've seen, or the China flu, we've, we've seen uh, some really credible experts say there is no way that this is man-made. And we've, we've also seen some people say, hey, it is man-made. Um, so, you know, enormous evidence, this is uh, quoting Pompeo, uh, that, there, that, that, you know, this began in Wuhan. Uh, we've said from the beginning that this was a virus that originated in Wuhan, China. We took a lot of grief for that from the outset, but I think the whole world can see now, uh, he said to ABC News. Um, here's the thing. What I've heard is there's, there's a lot of discussion about was it created in a lab versus did it, you know, did it escape potentially from a lab. So I, th I think it would be possible to find this disease in nature, and I think that's what most folks uh, are saying. So if you found this disease in nature, that doesn't, that doesn't rule out the fact that maybe you, once you found it, you decided you wanted to, to see how it spread and do something. And you could have had a very simple accident where the animal, supposedly the bat, uh, got out and spread the disease to the human. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't really know how, uh, how that happened. We know, I, I know we have a way of testing the fingerprints of a disease to see where it originated from. Uh, was it man-made? Was it uh, found in nature? And I think I, I believe the scientists who are who are doing that are not incentivized to to lie to us. Um, but it's very possible that by the time China realized this was happening, it became that uh, oh no moment. Like we we really need to shut this thing down, and we don't want to be responsible for it because it's going to be a big it's going to be a big deal. Um, and, and I think we can kind of tell that because didn't they buy, like, all of the world's uh, PPE? You know, they knew it was going to be a problem. They started buying from not only their own production but from other parts of the world to, to bring the PPE to China. So um, I, I have to at least say Pompeo is probably pretty well informed. I'm sure he has access to uh, medical experts and, and biological experts who, who, who do some of these uh, uh you know, chemical warfare, biological warfare uh, types of uh, types of experts. So, so we'll have to keep an eye on this, see what happens, see what uh, what the president unveils. I have noticed the president's had a lot tougher, uh, you know, mindset towards China over the last couple of weeks, and even uh, even this evening, he's he's talking a little bit about this. So, we want you to stay uh, stay in touch, stay informed. Uh, Hey, listen, great things are happening here with the Virginia Department of Justice. I know it's going to happen in other parts of the country uh, as, we see, as we see these uh, overreaching governments getting their hands slapped and pushed back uh, by the federal government right now and by Donald J. Trump and uh, his desire to maintain our civil liberties. So, listen, we want you to make some comments. Come and like us on all the different media. We look forward to seeing you next time.